Greetings, everyone. We will begin discussing adding and subtracting uh, fractions with different denominators and with mixed numbers. So this to collaborate um, both areas of adding and subtracting. We're going to walk through some models that will prepare you for the homework lesson, which will build you to do well on the quiz. So let's look at a few models in those regards. Okay, let's begin with the following model, A, one-fifth plus two-thirds. So right away, because we don't have the same denominator, we cannot add. So what will happen is that we will go through and go through our LCM, and right away, hopefully we think about three, and then we think about five. We realize that the main number going through the timetables that they have in common will be 15. So now that will become my denominator. 15 for the first fraction and then 15 for the second fraction. So now with the same denominator, we can begin adding the numerator. But let's convert 1 fifth to what over 15? Well, if I think about it, I know that 5 times 3 will equal to the 15. So whatever I do to the denominator, I will do to my numerator, multiply one times three. And now my numerator is three over 15. I would do the same process with the second fraction. Three times what will give me 15? Three times five will give me 15. So once again, I multiply the numerator by five and two times five will become 10. So what do I realize? That my numerator would be 3 plus 10 over 15. And so that will become equal to 13 over 15, final answer. In model B, let's take it a step further. Let's look at subtraction and let's look at if we have one minus five over eight. So what stands out, I'm quite sure, is simply this one whole. So given this one whole, how will we handle that and make it so we can solve it as a fraction? So what we're gonna break down is pay attention again to my denominator. So I already know that the second fraction has five over eight. So that lets me know that my denominator to make it the same will be just that eight. What is the same thing as one whole? Well, the same fraction, what is that? Eight over eight. So there, what will I end up with in my numerator? Eight minus five over eight, and that will become three over eight, okay? So let's try a, another model similar to that um, with 3 minus 5 over 12. And we're still doing the same approach. Now what has occurred, we move from one whole to three whole, what we need to determine. So once again, I pay attention to my second fraction, which is 12. That lets me know that my denominator would be 12. Now here's the catch. We know one whole is 12 over 12. So what would three whole be? Which would be simply just saying three times 12. And that will give us 36. So in essence, I will have my numerator 36 minus five over 12, which will become 31 over 12. Or if I have to stress that as a mixed number, we know we will take 12, divide that into 31, and that will go two times for 24. And then when I subtract, use the calculator quickly, and there it is, or two and seven over 12, final answer. All right, so I want you to uh, bring D 
which is three over 25 plus 12 over 25, add that and reduce that. I would like for you to send me D and E as a inbox message uh, with these sample problems towards extra credit towards your midterm. Um, and I will also have more for you at the end of the video. But let's go ahead and see how well you can apply D and E. And we will um, definitely discuss those, but make sure you submit those in uh, to count as toward bonus points by um, before I discuss them. If after I discuss them, you will not be able to submit. They will not count toward bonus, okay? So just want you to be aware of that. Um, so I plan to work F and let's look at, uh, uh, here, 5, 6, minus 4, and 5y. And the level of difficulty is mainly with the variable y, but it's no big deal. But let's just have a discussion on that. So when I look at 5, when I look at 6, what will be the same number that we know they will have in common? 5 times 6 will become 30. So we know that the same denominator, uh, LCD, least common denominator, would be 30. Okay. Now, because we have a Y in play, we will then include that into our denominator. It will turn into 30Y because Y is part of my denominator from the 5Y. So we have to allow that to become part of the, the denominator uh, as the least common denominator, okay? So once we identify the least common denominator, then we can proceed with the process, five, six minus four over five y. So what will occur is that I will look at six times five, and I realize that will give me 30, but also what else am I missing? I'm missing the y. So therefore I realize that five y will be what's missing that I will need to multiply up top as well. And that will give me 25Y over 30Y. Then what do I realize in the second fraction out of 5Y, what's missing for 30Y? I'll need to multiply that by six. And once I multiply the top and bottom by six, I realized that four times six will give me 24. I will then put everything under one umbrella, 30Y. So what will that become? 25Y minus 24, final answer. All right, next up I wanted to identify, let's talk about uh, mixed numbers. And mainly this is following your uh, guided notebook. To add mixed numbers, there, what we're gonna be doing are the following procedures. To add, we're first gonna add the fractional part. Secondly, we add the whole numbers. And then we'll write the answer as a mixed number. Uh, and then of course, if there's a fraction that's part of less than a one, we will also state the fraction. However, with to subtract mixed numbers, we would then do the same process, subtract the fraction parts, subtract the whole numbers. But an extra strategy that we're going to practice is when we have to borrow, which is the last box here that we're going to look at. If the fraction part being subtracted is larger than the fraction, I'm going to teach you the borrowing technique. And then we'll then continue with the um, as far as making the fraction would then become an improper fraction. So let's just look at a few and uh, begin with that process. All right, so let's look at G, three and one fifth plus five and one half. First things first, we identify that five and two, they do not have the same denominator, but when I think about five, when I think about two, what would be that number for, for the LCD, least common denominator? that will be 10. So right away, I'm able to see 10 and 10 for that fraction. So we already know the whole numbers are three and five. So once again, what will make me have 10 when I show five times two for 10, which leaves me with one times two, and that result will be two. 
Likewise on the second fraction, how will I get 10 with two times five here will give me 10. So of course one times five, what will that result be? Five, okay? So there I've already have my fraction two plus five, and there, that result, when I add two plus five, will become what over 10? That will become seven over 10. And then I will simply go and identify my whole number. Three plus five will give me a total of eight. So I have eight and seven over 10. Final answer. All right, so let's look at H and I, and now we're gonna look at uh, the barring technique, and let's see how that works. All right, so right away here, um, we, we already see that, guess what, eight and eight, I'm okay. I have a like denominator, so I won't have to determine the de least common denominator is given. But however, when I go here and identify the one minus five, that's where the issue lies because I need a larger numerator here at one. So that's when we would go to the barring technique, bar from the 10, just like in subtraction, basic subtraction, it will drop down to a nine, okay? So the one that we have borrowed, guys, is eight over eight. So all we have to do is each and every time is take the denominator and add it to one. Because what we're really doing is that we're really taking eight over eight and I'm adding it to one over eight. That's just a sidebar to let you see what we're doing. So I realized that just by shortcut method of eight plus one, that easily give me my new fraction, which would be nine over eight. So once I borrow, this will happen every time. You will end up with the improper fraction. Nine is larger than eight. Now, guess what? I can complete the problem because now I see what I have. Fraction wise, I have nine minus five over eight, and that will give me nine minus five will of course give me four over eight. And then what is the whole number here? Nine minus three. So of course nine minus three will give me six and four over eight. Then we see the reduce here because four times one, will give me eight and four times two, I'm sorry, four times one will give me four and four times two will give me eight. That allows me to see that the fours will cancel out. And there's my final answer, six and one half, final answer. All right, so same process with model I. I show four and two ninths minus one and five ninths. Once again, I see here that a two is smaller than the five. We will go through the same process. I have the same denominator here with nine and nine. So I realize that my denominator will stay as a nine. So what will happen here in the first fraction mixed number? I could borrow from the four. It will become a three. Once again, with nine whole plus two, nine over nine plus two, shortcut method, just take it at the bottom and top. Nine plus two will give me 11. There's my new fraction. Basically, the second fraction will never change, and I can finish up my problem. Once again, I show 11 minus five over nine, and what will that will give me? That will simply give me six, over nine, but don't forget we have the whole numbers, three and one. Three minus one will give me two and six over nine. But once again, I know that three times two for six, then I know that three times three for nine, and there they cancel out, I'm left with two and two-thirds, final answer. All 
right, J model, 14 and 7 over 10 minus 3 and 4 fifths. Now, here in this model, do we have the same denominator? Hopefully we see that 10 and 5 are different, but, and this problem is stacked, and I think you may like this technique a little bit smoother than going uh, horizontal across, but let's just see what you prefer, okay? And you can work out accordingly, but normally we will stack uh, the problem, so let's find that LCD, which we have, which is 10, all right? So we realize here, that we've already have 10 stated in the top fraction. So we realize that seven, 10 times one is 10. So that will be no change. We will get seven over 10. So that will remain 14 and seven over 10. Here, five times two for 10. So we realize that four times two will give me eight. So there I have three and eight over 10. But as I keep looking, what do I notice? Is that the numerator is larger for seven over 10 versus eight over 10. So that will allow me to go here to 14 and borrow. That drops down to a 13. So what that means is I'll take 10 whole, 10 plus 10 plus seven over 10 and add that together. What would that give me? 10 plus seven, 17 over 10. And my second fraction will remain three and eight over 10. So I'm able to complete my problem, multiplying my fractions, 17 minus eight. What would that give me? That will simply give me nine over 10. And 10 minus 10 will give me three. I don't know what happened here. I'm having some technical issues. So therefore I should get 10 whole and nine over 10 final answer. I don't know what has happened, but guys, but something has happened here. Um, so that should be my final answer. So there should be 10 and not 10 and nine over 10 final answer. So please complete model K again. So you have three examples that you can provide for um, extra credit towards your midterm. So that's D, E, and K. All right. Um, so please uh, submit those via inbox. And I look forward to looking at those. Thanks, you guys. Take care. Bye.